Since the dawn of the internet, there have been certain pop culture debates that have sown discord across the globe. Coke versus Pepsi, Android versus iPhone, DC versus Marvel. Topics that have sparked years of brain-numbing argumentation online. But these petty feuds pale in comparison to the holy wars waged by a certain group of web dwellers. With the glass ceiling broken, all the oppressed groups shall prosper, especially the most oppressed group of all, gamers. Console wars, peripheral debates, or a spicy take on your digital fashion sense, gamers are very particular and very defensive about the things they love. What is the reasoning? What is the reasoning behind the, the notorious Heimerdinger nerf? Heimerdinger is overperforming in top, mid, and bot lane at high levels of play, giving him a ding down. Go f yourself, you stupid mother. But when it comes to the current esports zeitgeist, there is perhaps no debate more contentious than the one between CSGO and Valorant. On the one side, you have CS fans who are passionate, experienced, aging, and think Valorante is child game. Then there are the Valorant stands who are fresh-faced, enthusiastic, and see their tack shooter cousins as a bunch of butthurt boomers. But with the lines in the sand firmly drawn, almost all notable competitors and content creators have made their allegiances clear. In CS, you gotta learn every single flash and smoke and nade and molly lineup to be an effective player in this game you're relying on your team to be the effective players in those roles and you're focused more on your role and i love that you gave up on i'm expecting it i uninstalled valorant Literally. Literally. Dog holy shit, this game is horrible dude no wonder it fucking died it's gonna be like the the new age counter strike right that people really like that the kids are gonna want to play but uh for old guys like me I think it Counter-Strike. But there are some who manage to walk the fence. Neutrals, whose historical love for Counter-Strike can never be fully broken, even in the face of something colorful and new, as tempting as it may be. But I have never forgot about the CS community, man. It's just, it's where I came from. People always ask me, so Valorant's way better. That's why you play it more. I'm like, dude, it's, just, it's more fun to play something different when I'm not, you know, uh. competing. But there is one colossal content creator who has chosen to navigate this minefield a little differently. A polarizing heel of a head clicker who, despite having written his name into the history books of Valve's fabled franchise, has seemingly become the poster boy for its rival IP. I am, of course, talking about none other than Tarek Tarek Chalik. Yo, smoke, I heard him. Kim throw, Kim throw, Kim throw. Hello, hello! Behind you, mother I'm in my own head. I'm doggy. I'm playing like a dog. Oh, oh my goodness gracious! Let me down, let me down! Dude, I was stuck on his head, bro! Since stepping away from competitive CSGO in the spring of 2021, Tarek has gone from being one of NACS's greatest champions to, shockingly, what appears to be one of its biggest haters. Yes, yeah, like, it's the easiest way to, for me to lose my erection these days. So what inspired Tarek to walk away from the game that defined him for years, only to fall into the loving arms of one that he initially didn't raid at all? How has he been able to become one of Twitch's biggest streamers by inciting a civil war within his own fanbase? And, more importantly, should a single word that he says about either game actually be taken at face value? You might get a global, you might get a silver, or even worse, you might get a Valorant player. <laughs>All right, guys, instead of the usual sub and subscribe spiel I give you, I'm going to ask instead that you check out our newest show, Worth, where last week, 
We did an episode on JKS's incredible stand-in performance at Katowice earlier this year. Be sure to check it out. Okay, so it goes without saying, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Tarek is certified Counter-Strike royalty. He has consistently been one of the game's most popular streamers, and more importantly, his professional career was nothing short of exceptional. Most notably at the Boston Major, alongside his compatriots on Cloud9, Tarek won North America's first and only major championship. And he wasn't just along for the ride. He was named the tournament's MVP for his outstanding individual performance. Tarek now trying for the no scope. Skadoodle is there. Oh my god. Tarek still staying alive inside the box. Not always easy to play on the CT side. No. I mean, That's if, very good. If you get into the tough economic situation, you're just almost done with. Great double kill from Tarek. Don't lose the weapon. He gets a third, a fourth in the round. Holding the angle once again, but does he go high? Does he go low? It is a dance, and now they concede multiple angles. Tarek going, takes all the spice to the down. Guardian on 11 HP. Rain peaks, and he gets the angle now. Superior angle is there a defuse for the CT side. The non just yet. They're spamming the grenades. They're touching the bomb. And now goes Rain. And now the bomb is trying to defuse it again, but no. Guardian gets taken down. Absolutely unreal round from Cloud9. And the score is tied. But, as we all know, in the topsy turvy world of Counter Strike, it's hard to stay on top for long. And after a few years of roster jumping, inconsistent results, and COVID putting a massive dampener on CSGO and NA during the online era, Tarek decided to put his illustrious competitive career on pause in April of 2021 to instead focus his attention on content creation. So over the next few months, Tarek started streaming and uploading to YouTube more consistently. And when I say consistently, I mean, every goddamn day. Whether he was pugging with washed up boomers or smurfing with his former teammates, Tark quickly became the choice spot for anyone looking for some truly unhinged CSGO content. So Maybe I'm saying I'm not the only one who has okay. this problem, it's just CS in general. <laughs> no, I, 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 can, I see other streamers that move it the way you do. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I got knifed, I got knifed. I'm under heaven right now. Ramp coming to heaven. What the f? I I'm I'm knife him back for you. How did I get knifed too? Wait, I'll, 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 I'll eventually. <laughs> One heaven, I'll kill him. What's, ha <laughs> what's happening, bro? <laughs> what the f? You guys don't say where you died. I asked three times. Not, not a single calm. Not a single calm. You guys yell, oh, I got knife. I got knife. No f***ing calm. I said ram. I said ram. Walk out and peek. Walk out and I'll start walking out and kill him. Dude! Shoot! Wait, bro. Dude, report this kid for throwing. Report him, dude. It's a f***ing liquid fan. This kid's such a nerd, he's throwing on purpose, dude. Now, it just so happens that right around the time that Tarek made this big career move, Valorant had been released and was taking the streaming world by storm. Everybody who was anybody was playing Riot's shiny brand new tax shooter. And while Tarek held out longer than most, he eventually decided to see what all the hype was about. But it's safe to say that at first, he wasn't exactly convinced. Can hold the angle heaven, hold the angle heaven. That's convinced. Hold the, oh my God, is this coming from you? Dude, I'm too distracted by this You see, like many other seasoned counter-strikers, Tarek had his reservations about Valorant. The gunplay wasn't as consistent, the utility felt restrictive, and the movement was molasses compared to CSGO. But as much as Valorant's differences initially irked Tarek, it started making more and more appearances on his stream. Not just because it was wildly popular, but because it offered Tarek two things he notoriously loved. One, a reason to grind. Two, an outlet for sweaty competition. Yeah. One more on your no team, right. one more on your team. Sure. One enemy remaining. Oh, what the oh, what? 
bro. Jarso. What did he just do, bro? Bro, I just dismantled them. Now, as expected, as soon as Tarek started to become really comfortable with Valorant, people started harassing him, suggesting ad nauseum that he, like every other North American CSGO competitor, go pro. And while he obviously had the technical ability, it was hard to deny how lucrative and rewarding his dedication to streaming had become. But even beyond playing the game, Tark's stream had become something of a hotspot for competitive Valorant. Whether you were a new esports fan interested in watching for the first time, or an elitist CSGO lover curious to learn the game from someone you respected, Tarek's VCT watch parties were the place to be. Just having three of oh What? Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god. Oh my god. No, he hears the other guy. The what is Metal doing? Metal, what the f are you doing? Metal's wrongly played, but it's fine. Because I believe that my mix will. My, my, my chamber is no. Jane just got two kills in mid, by the way. This kill, well, yes, might be impactful. You kill that now! Now, when most streamers move away from the game they originally made their name in, their viewership tends to take a hit. But that never seemed to be an issue for Tarek, and that might be a result of his hidden talent. No, not his knack for ceremoniously clapping cheeks, but rather his natural ability to, let's say, disturb the peace. You see, long before he was known as the content king to Valorant kitties, Tarek was known by CS stands as the content criminal, a title bestowed upon him by the great inimitable Superstitum, referencing the fact that Tarek is, and always has been, happy to make content around being a bit of a shit disturber. I'm being spammed, holy shit. I bugged them, bugged them, bugged them, 1 HP, bugged them. Bugged them. Bugged them, bugged them. Any bugs, any bugs, any dance? Any bug dance? Bug, bug. What's bug then? Bug then, law. Steals law, steals law. Josh needs him. Bro, 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 do something, please. It die. If you die, there's three of us left. Just die. Give them something to shoot at. You don't stand behind a box with one health. You need to die before all three of us. Redo it. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, Damn. the damn god! Perk's literally hopping on Duracell batteries. I'm literally in Som's room. Look at this <laughs> shit. I'm literally this in Som's room. I shit you not. I'm inside Som's room. <laughs> I'm not even <laughs> going. Of course, over the years, winding up his peers has proven itself to be light work for someone with Tarek's gift. So, in order to truly test his ability to stir the pot, Tarek decided to play up the natural, already existing CS Valorant divide in his fanbase by pitting both sides against each other. You see, when it comes to making FPS content in North America, Valorant is undeniably the game. Like, just look at Tarek's YouTube channel and you can see that it's just true. But to appease his diehard CS audience, Tarek knew that throwing slight jabs at Riot's game could quell any concerns that he was, well, a filthy sellout. Because at the end of the day, all that CS fans ever want to hear is that Counter-Strike is in fact the king of shooters. So he drip fed them exactly that cs is so much harder man not only is the game harder but being a pro is so much harder that shit was farming these mother in valorant dude now he comes over to cs and like he's having a hard time at that point i'm considering to go back if i were him be like this shit well in valorant we're shooting back this stupid cartoon bullshit cartoon network looking ass characters games dog shit i tell you dog shit now to be fair this is Tarek we are talking about. So in reality, CSGO fans weren't safe either. I don't play as much as I used to. It's just because like Valorant's like new and exciting and it gets you me like run. turned on and shit when I play. Yes, like it's the easiest way to for me to lose my erection these days. I think CS fans are very diehard bandwagon. Like they've been watching CS for like countless years. 
and it just seems like a group of old men that are angry old men to me, honestly. Valorant is so much harder than CSGO. There's so many abilities. Just so much, like, so many specifics that I can't really explain to you guys. Yes, that is right. Tarek, the supreme shit disturber that he is, turned the CSGO versus Valorant debate into a war of attrition in which he was essentially the arms dealer. But funnily enough, amidst all the mayhem and the memes, what Tarek instigated wasn't really an immature, if not ill-willed battle, but rather a conversation. A forum where both sides of his community could put him on blast and poke fun at each other without taking themselves or their games too seriously. And even though Tarek was certainly enjoying himself whipping up shitstorms and watching them from a distance, every now and then he offered his viewers sincere insights into the states of both games. Because whether diehard CS fans want to admit it or not, Tarek wasn't just playing Valorant more because of its wild popularity. He was playing it more because he actually liked it. Lately, I haven't been feeling CS that much. It's been kind of boring a little bit. I don't know. Because it's only fun when we 5Q. The problem with CS is there's nothing to, like, there's nothing to, there's nothing to do. Like, I'm going to go on CS and I'm just going to pug. And the only fun in it is pugging on my friends when we 5Q. Otherwise, like, there's nothing to grind for, strive for do anything like i'm just gonna pug and it's fun because we can troll around and it could be fun like in pugs and shit but in valorant it's new it's different for me there's the leaderboard i can strive for something i'm learning new things at the end of the day Tarek isn't some two-faced sellout who's profiting off of teasing people he's a genuine down-to-earth dude whose love for fps has allowed him to grow massively by uniting two disparate audiences and he's achieved it by simply being himself it's insane what are you saying it's not that good bro look at the detail in this drawing man look at my calves look at the overheat text look at this freak in front of me look at my abs and if anything what he's done with his mischievous antics is shine a light on just how absurd it is that there would ever be any sort of tension between these two communities. There's no real betrayal in liking both games. And for a guy like Tarek, who has given so much of himself to Counter-Strike, I think it's safe to say that he has earned the right to stream whatever the hell he wants without having to justify it to anybody. CS is like, uh, how could I put this? My ex-wife. My ex-wife. It's like my ex-wife, dude. I love seeing her every now and then, but, like, I'm, I'm married to a new girl now. Like, we can have, we can have dinner every now and then. Like, we could, you know, we can do this, we can do that, but, like, I'm, I found someone new. I am, of course, talking about none other than Tarek, Tarek. Chelik. I'm pretty sure that's how you say his name, but I have very, very little experience in Turkish pronunciations. Chelik. Chelik. There you go. I wasn't that. That wasn't that enough.